skilled by the playmaker, the Jack himself. If they go out wide, Spencer running away from support, they can still do it, and there it is for New Zealand. Spencer, goodness, he's not going to pass it, is it? He does to Rocco Thoko. I could watch it all day. The very best of Carlos Spencer. He's in studio tonight. What does he do? He picks his Form 15 from Super Rugby. But more importantly, Lossie, I want to hear your All Black First Five for 2023. You ready? I am ready. You ready? I'm ready. No, yep. let's, nah, <laughs> let's bring it on. Let's save it. Let's go. Let's Koto Katoa, good evening and welcome into the breakdown. Well, after seven rounds, the Hurricanes are top of the table. Richie Moonga uh, is now the Crusaders' latest centurion. Six Super Rugby titles, does this make him the greatest of all time? We'll discuss it. Plus, we head to Japan and catch up with the one and only Aaron Cruden. Joining us on the show, Jeff Wilson, you are here, you are back. Carlos Spencer, great to have you as well. And Stephen Bates, welcome back to the show. Happy Easter, everyone. Uh, how has Easter weekend been? Full of treats? or oh, Full of treats. Tim Tim Hams or Easter eggs? No, dark chocolate bunny rabbits. <laughs> The healthiest, chocolate, chocolate, the bunny healthiest chocolate you could find. Uh, I, are we I, talking the big eggs or just Oh, uh, just medium, just medium. Just medium. So ten of those. Come on, Batesy. Fess up, fess uh, up. Marshmallow, Come on, fess up. A couple of marshmallow eggs, I'll be honest with you. Full breakfast. <laughs> And what about the stop last night to bother oh, the kids? Yeah, well... We've all done are, it, we've all done it. The kids are asking, when does Easter Bunny come? When does Easter Bunny come? And, of course, Easter Bunny come, but we just had to top up from pack and save as well, <laughs> just to make sure there was a few more there as well. At 10 o'clock last night. At 10 o'clock last night. At 9.55. At 9.55, just before closing time. Yeah. I was lucky Adine did it before she headed to Tauranga and got it done for me, so no, no issues at all. I, I don't eat chocolate anyway. No, no, none of us do, do we? Um, there's something I actually want to bring up, because there's been um, some footage circulating on social media. It's, it's actually of you and your 18-year-old son, I'm pretty sure you're the only former player that could keep up uh, in suicide races with your son. Are we not wrong? Oh, I certainly couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. No doubt about it. But I'm not, let's not say I don't try. Um, Batesy? Yeah, my, my, I gave up racing my son when he beat me up the sand dunes in Mungafai. Yep. So I said, done, Game we're over. done, we're done. How long that did you stick first, with that him That was the for? first set. And I wasn't going down and up. Oh, By the second set, I was good like effort, 10 though. metres behind, so... <laughs> pretty good effort. That, that was amazing with your son, Peyton Spencer, of course. Well, time now to chat Super Rugby. All thanks to Neurofin, available at Chemist Warehouse. There was one New Zealand derby across the weekend. There was nothing at it in the first 40, but the Hurricanes ended up pulling away. Bates, I want to come to you first. Uh, seven rounds through, Hurricanes top of the table, uh, six victories. Are you convinced by them? Oh, well, well done. First and foremost, I think, well done, awesome. I do believe they've got a, uh, a hell of a challenge this week in the Chiefs. So I think the Chiefs are the form team, and I'd be the, uh, I reckon the Brumbies are there or thereabouts too. Um, but I will, what I will say about the Canes is that I almost believe they quite like that. Like They'll go into the game this weekend as underdogs, even though they're top of the table. Um, and I, I think they like that edge about what they're doing. They like that little chip on their shoulder. Um, but... If I was a betting person, I would, I would go the Chiefs' way. Um, but what they've done is, has been pretty impressive. And what they've been able to do is, from no fault of their own, they've had a nice run into the, into the season. So well done for them. They can only beat the teams that they've been able to play, and they've done that pretty well. Lossie, what did you think of it? Yeah, I think they're much, a uh, much better all-rounded team now. Mm. Um, you know, I think up front, uh, around their set piece, I think their tight five are, are now standing up. As we're in the past, they probably lack that up front. A um, couple of guys in the midfield playing really well. Um, we know what Geordie can do. I think Billy Proctor has been really good for them. Um, also, uh, Celesi on the wing, um, you know, with the stuff he's creating. So I just think all round they'll become a better side. Look, there was no Aaron Smith and there was no Mitch Hunt who was a late scratching for the Highlanders. So reality was, in this game, they were two players that, when you look at their season, they're going to need to play well in every game. And when they've played well, they've won. So they were two significant losses for the Highlanders. The Highlanders hung in there, but in the end, they weren't polished enough, and they're up against a team who is playing well. And clearly well-coached. 
I think, doing a really nice job. And they had some additions come into their group. Um, Jamie McIntosh has come in, doing some great work with their front row. But I liked what Corey Jane had to say at half time. Just have a listen to this, because this is classic coaching. Simple as this. Have a listen. It is uh, when we hold the ball and we can put them under pressure, uh, we've got some decent momentum and rewards. Uh, conversely, when we uh, give away some sloppy penalties and put ourselves under pressure, they get on the front foot. So uh, we've just got to be better with the ball, and then when we don't have it, don't be stupid. <laughs> don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Absolutely, don't do anything dumb. I mean, that's what they did in the second half. They, their discipline was yeah. high. So critical, Lossie. When, it's, it's, it's simple, right? Exactly. It's not a complicated it's probably every game. Coach's, um, Speech before kickoff. Really, I was going to say, has any coach said to yeah. either of you three, don't do anything dumb? And that's what they're doing, you know, they're just doing the simple things well. Um, they're winning their set piece. And you look on the other side of the, the Highlanders, and also I'll just jump into the, the Rebels as well. You look straight after half time, the amount of penalties they gave away, both those two sides, that just piggybacked their opposition into the game, and then in the end of the day was too much for them. Absolutely critical. When you go up against teams who have got a forward pack who are operating well, and Teams make the mistake against the Crusaders often. You give away penalties, they can go to set piece, they can play territory, and all of a sudden, you're the team that's under all sorts of pressure. It might have sounded simple, it might have sounded blunt, but pure and simple, I think that is the way the Hurricanes are doing it, and doing it well. Well, you mentioned the midfield um, and Billy Proctor, Geordie Barrett, that combination that the Hurricanes have, but someone from the Highlanders is standing out as well, isn't he? Thomas Omunga Jensen. Is he the answer to some of these injuries that the All Blacks have had in the midfield? We saw Jack Goodhue go off again for an HAA. David Harvilli has come back into it. But is this guy, is he made for international rugby? I think so. And I just think with better players around him, um, I think he can be even better. Um, so just what he's shown over the last few weeks for me, just around his ball carry, this stuff here, you know, he's dominant in the ball carry, you know, he makes good decisions, but he's hard to bring down. Um, so for me, yes, I, you know, if there's an opportunity to give this guy a crack, you know, I would. I like on the dominant in the ball carry, what you said, and I'll just be honest, and you, know, you played with a guy that wasn't quite the stature in, in semi T, you know what I mean? But he just did simple things really well. And I'll be honest, I'm a big fan of Leo Mapi as well, who played for the Canes, and that ability just to be able to, whether you've got front football or back football, just to get your team back on the front foot, I reckon, is a, is a huge asset. And so I don't know what he weighs, but, geez, he's a solid boy, that's for sure. He'd like to add to his game, but the only way you can do that is uh, playing consistently. And he hasn't had that opportunity. I'd like to see an offload game come into it. There are times where there are players around him he could find, even when he goes to ground. Uh, that matchup with Geordie Barrett, it was a good one. Geordie was really solid. And we're seeing not just solid from Geordie, but we're seeing very, very good from time to time for me. And that's what I love about a lot of our All Blacks lossy is the fact that consistently week on week they are playing well. Geordie's one of those for me. And his goal kicking looks great. He looks confident. He's healthy, which is important. But once again, to have some experience like this, but to have options of youth coming through, it's good right now, but they do need to keep building on their game. But you talk about that something extra as well. And I think Geordie's got to start bringing that to his game as well. You talk about the offload. Because um, we know what Geordie can do, he's physical. He loves the physical challenge, you know. He's, he's going to carry for you, he'll make his tackles. But I think he's just got to bring something else to his game, you know, around trying to beat defenders or just trying to create space and opportunities for others around him. Well, when you talk about uh, physicality, obviously this man has it in spades. But if we look at the front rowers for the Highlanders and Hurricanes, that is a battle that the All Blacks coaches would have had a close eye on, right? You've got uh, the future of New Zealand right there and Tyrell Lomax and Ethan DeGroote. Could they be the next Carl Heyman, Tony Woodcock in years to come? Yeah, I'll just go with uh, Lomax first. What, I, what I've really enjoyed about him is that he's been earmarked for probably, I don't know, three, maybe even four years, but it's taken him a while to get there. And I just think sometimes, especially tight heads, we want our tight heads to come out of school or come out at 21 and be awesome straight away, but it's taken him a while to get there. And that was a really, really good scrum, scrum battle last night between the two. Maybe De Groot slightly got it on top of him a little bit in that, in that um, situation, but... Both their work around the field, I thought, was great. And, and guys that went quite deep into the game as well. Let's, let's think about what they've done over the last year, these two players, and where they've got to on the back of what you've said. Ethan DeGroote got himself fit because he wasn't fit enough after Super Rugby last year. He got the message, he listened and improved his game. All of a sudden, he's become 
a player who's possibly world class. And Lomax, all of a sudden, he played for the Māori All Blacks last year. Clayton McMillan started to tap into something the Hurricanes had started to see as well, and he started delivering on their potential. The great thing about these two guys is clearly they're going to be competitive inside the All Black environment. That's where they're going to work together. But I see a lot of what I saw out of Sam Whitelock and Brodie Retallick for years happening here. They play against each other, and it's game on, right? It is 100% game on where the mates goes out Carlos, yeah. it goes out the door, and you know what? It's a different scrap oh, totally. and a different fight, yeah. and that's fun to watch. Yeah. And for me, the Groot, oh, you know, I, I think he could be one of our best Lucys around. Mm -hmm. um, and just looking through those clips, you know, he, he, he brings his physicality around the, the carry, his defence, but it's just those little things extra, you know, the little show and go to Fakataba coming around the corner, and then a little inside ball back to, you know, who was coming in the inside. Just little things around that where those props can bring that to their game, you know, with that skill set. And, uh, and that's what I like about De Groot. He's got that as well. I look at De Groot, it's, it's given them a weapon they probably haven't had for a long time. Well, we talk about form in Super Rugby. Are these two the form props in Super Rugby, and will they be the starters for the All Blacks? Does it simply translate to the international game? It's not my week for Form 15, Kirsty. I'm going to stay, oh, I'm gonna stay out of that, Kirsty. I was going to back right out of that. Well, we look forward to seeing your Form 15 uh, in the next 10 or so. But Ethan DeGroote, great news about him. He's bucked the trend. He's not going overseas next year. He is re signed with New Zealand Rugby until 2026. So he'll be with Southland, which you'll be stoked about for the Jags, the Highlanders. <laughs> And you feel rugby. Let's be honest, the Southland probably won't see him. Yeah. But it's actually a message of the fact you can come from anywhere in New Zealand and you've got that opportunity to possibly become an All Black. And he's gone through the ranks. He's a proud Highlander. It's great for Southland. But it's great news. Considering so, everyone that we're losing next year, right? We've got a lot of players on the move. Batesy lost. We've got a lot of guys, and particularly guys who have still got plenty of really good rugby uh, heading overseas. And, and to me, it is a concern when we are losing some of these guys. You, the, some of the names that we're talking about who could clearly still have an impact, the likes of a Brad Weber, Aaron Smith, if you actually go through all of the Super Rugby sides, they're losing some of their superstars. They're actually premier players. Good chance Bowden Barrett's going to head away. Chance of Rico Iwani um, out of the Hurricanes. Adi Savia not in um, Super Rugby next year. It's going to be a vastly different picture um, next season, Batesy. Yeah, it certainly is. And I, and I suppose we, we always talk about it, about the depth in New Zealand, and it's going to be tested next year. And, and I... I believe personally that it's already being tested this year. If you look at probably the depth that is, and I've got to be careful what I say, but probably the depth is coming through when we get a couple of injuries for our top line players, when we rest people from All Black rare, it's, uh, from all black time. What happening is, you've got to remember, there's people going to the MLR as well, which has taken our depth away. So all of a sudden, the depth around that is, uh, is really stretching us. We've got a new team, Moana, who's taken a lot of guys from the New Zealand depth charts as well. So the depth in New Zealand rugby at the moment is being stretched and that will go further next year. So if you take all these stars out of the competition, you talk about taking them out for one week for an All Blacks rest week, but if you take them out permanently, is the competition, is Super Rugby in trouble without all these big names? Oh, of course it is, you know, and the public want to see those big names. Mm. You know, that's what puts bums on seats. You know, they want to see the best players in New Zealand playing week in, week out. You know, you're not going to pay whatever it is, OK, to watch second, third strings. You want to see your top players playing we can we can so this is going to be a challenge right and, and I understand it clearly the marketplace is demanding it right now and the contracts that are being on offered um, in Japan clearly and creating sabbatical opportunities and we're supporting players not just to play there but to come back and play in New Zealand this is something I, I know New Zealand rugby is going to have to consider and de deal with and you know I'm hopeful next week on this show, mm. we're going to get some answers from New Zealand Rugby about exactly where the investment is being made in our future. I mean, how are we possibly going to keep these players in the game? Because Richie Moong is another one that mm. has been lost for three years. And if you don't have that competition in layer uh, at Super Rugby, Batesy, how do you prepare players to play international rugby? If And, and with, there's guys like Tom Robinson, mm. Alex Nankerville as well. These are that, that tier you're talking about, just in below, who creates some depth and internal competition in sides. And then there is, there's, there's, there's competitions all over the world pulling in different places and, and different um, levels of player, that's for sure. I, I suppose the one thing that they, they've done a little bit is NZR recently is they sent an A-team away and then again an A-team's going to Japan um, just before MPC kicks out. So that's, that's developing people in that space too. Um, so that's an avenue they've looked at. But uh, I do agree with you, it's, um, it's a, a big drain on our resource at the moment. What if I throw this at you? Is it time... The eligibility laws, we keep hard and fast, hard and fast. We know what they've done in Australia. Uh, there's some guys that if they've played 70, 80 test matches, 
who deserve the opportunity, basically lost. I mean, to, to, to be selected if we need them in a critical test match? Yeah, we're opening up a can of worms. We are in, in that. Yeah, it's got a grenade. I'll um, just throw yeah, it out there yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, but I, I, I would have no... I know they call it the Gitto Law in Australia. I would have no issues with that, personally. Um, I think they've got... Uh, I think it's up to three. I'd have no issues with having it with five in New Zealand, you know? And you know, as a player, if you jump over there, if you jump over there, yep, there's a chance you won't be selected because if you're a if you're a 95% player and we have a 92% player here in New Zealand, you're going to miss out. Yep. So you you run that risk, you know what I mean? That's what it is, and you've got to make that decision. But for me personally, I, I just think the, the draw overseas from the French for the props, from the Japanese for everyone, yeah. um, you know, it's so big that we need to look at other ways to sort of do things. I don't think we throw the floodgates wide open, but I think we do open them a little bit. But hey, there's, I suppose, there's other conversations that I might not be aware of that fit into that category. You're nodding, Carlos. Do you agree? Oh, I, you I do agree. I do agree. And, and like you said, Goldie, it's, it's, what is it, is it 60, 70 tests before you can That's actually... That's a lot of tests. It? But, you know, what would... Uh, I think the luxury of being able to call on one of those experienced players, especially if it's a, a you know a, a key player, especially around our playmakers, a nine or a ten, it could be even a front row. You know, when we lose a key player in that area and we don't have anyone to back back them up, it'd be nice to actually go overseas and grab one of those back. You know. Just say on that as well, for you. so we've obviously seen plenty of people from Argentina, from England, to come over to here and get experience. You've got to remember, we're not the holders of rugby. We don't know everything about rugby, you know what I mean? So why can't I, and I'll just use him as an example, just the name that comes to my head, why can't a Bowden Barrett go over to Ireland for a season? Imagine what he'd learn. We don't know everything in this country, you know what I mean? So it goes both ways. We can, we can get some intel from over there as well. The problem is he won't get a rest day with you, though. <laughs> Play every game. tougher. <laughs> it won't be written into the contract. Well, we're going to continue this debate next week because we've got the CEO of New Zealand Robinson, uh, New Zealand Rugby, I should say, Mark Robinson, coming on the programme. So we'll dive into it a lot deeper. But you know how we've been talking up the Hurricanes? Don't forget about the Chiefs. They are still undefeated. They have been on a bye week, so they've been rested. But this weekend, it is the Hurricanes against the Chiefs. This is going to be big. Can anyone stop the Chiefs this year? And if so, will it be the Canes, Carlos? Good question. Um, where are they playing? Wellington. Wellington. It's Wellington. OK. Um, I suppose with the home advantage, I, I do give uh, the Hurricanes an outside chance. For me, it depends who's coming back from injury for the Chiefs, because I know they have got a few coming mm. back. Um, and if that's the case, you know, I just think they're only going to get better. Is the week off going to hinder... A, Hinder their performance in terms of you know settling back in. I don't think it will. Um, you know, I just think what they're doing at the moment. I think their culture. I think what McMillan's done with this team over the past five six weeks. Um, you know, he won't let them get to that space. So I just think at the moment, yeah, I just think uh, they'll be just too tough at the moment. Oh, to what your question was, can anyone stop them in the competition? 100% I reckon they can. I do reckon the Chiefs have an outstanding roster, and as Loss has said, they've got a couple of guys coming back. They've probably almost got the best roster, I reckon, in Super Rugby, but if you look at teams that can stop them, do I believe the Crusaders can stop them? Yes, I do believe they can. Do I believe the Brumbies can stop them? Yeah, I do believe they can. Do I believe the Blues? Are they firing at the moment? But if they get their stuff together, can they stop them? Yeah, I do believe they can. But there's lots of little things that's going to happen between now and quarter and semis that will sort of shape that conversation. Um, it'll be interesting this weekend. If, uh, as I said, I think I've already said I'd bet on the I'd bet on the Chiefs this weekend. But I know the Canes they'll enjoy that edge that everyone's almost ridden them off a little bit. Who's your money on? Oh, it's the Chiefs, absolutely. I just I love their roster. I love the way that they're playing. Um, the Hurricanes are a side that have clearly had a good run to start the season in terms of the teams they're playing against. They'll have to elevate their game. I think the one area that the Chiefs will be concerned is they need to step up on their front row in regards to their scrummaging is put them under pressure from time to time, and that's an area I think the Hurricanes will target. But they've got everything else to overcome there. But they're certainly not unbeatable. That's, that's, just not, that's just not the way it is right now. Well, it's going to be a great battle, isn't it? Uh, you've got Weber against Roygaard, Coles against Tokiaho, maybe Josh Lord returning for the Chiefs, and maybe Anton Leonard brown as well. When we come back, we catch up with a former Chief, Aaron Cruden, and we continue the First Five debate. Look of it, right there. 
of the 10 jersey of poison chalice at the moment for the All Blacks or what because here's a bloke who was thinking about being in Fiji on holiday and now he could be the biggest player the All Blacks have as they look to go forward. Aaron Pruden, All Blacks probe away and uh, welcome to the park. Now freed away for Cruden. Cruden looking to take on the line and tie through midfield. What a run. Now Cruden in the first base. He was about to go work on his 10, wasn't he, for the summer? Look at where he is now. Boy, what a pass mark for Aaron Cruden. About kids like Aaron Cruden, the nation descended upon them, said you guys must deliver for us in this match. They certainly didn't let anyone down. Cruden runs, walks through the gap. Cruden looks for support. Now they kick. go back, drop kick. Cruden. That is maturity. Now talking of kicks, here's one from Cruden, and it's another good one. And, and again, it's Cruden. Cruden stands his ground. Has thrown a bit of traffic his way, made all his tackles. Aaron Reed grabbed him, lifted him off the ground, and bear hugged him to within an inch of his life. The senior members in that team know what Aaron Cruden did tonight. And off goes Cruden. Search and run. Let's have a player down, and it's Aaron Cruden. I think that's just the skateboard graze, isn't it? Well, let's hope so, Grant Fox, uh, from rugby's point of view, because this is such a good story. But uh, Stephen Donald up and about. Well, come at the hour. Well, come at the man. What a twist of fate. This is as big a kick as you'll ever get. Here's his kick. saw it with Aaron Cruden and the beliefs there, so he believed in himself. And to me, that's the most pleasing thing. Now, apart from picking up the trophy, it's how we picked it up. You just want people to believe in themselves and trust each other, and that's what they did. Well, he's a special man with a special set of skills, isn't he? Of course, Rugby World Cup won a Super Rugby champion, and most recently, he's been plying his trade around the world, first in France and now in Japan with Suntory Sun Goliath. Konnichiwa, Aaron Cruden. Thank you so much for joining us on The Breakdown. How is life in Japan, and what's it actually like uh, for Kiwis playing over there and playing overseas at the moment? We're seeing so many of our guys head on up. Yeah, kia ora guys. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, yeah, to, to be honest, life in Japan, it's pretty beautiful, to be fair. Um, a lovely culture, just the, the, certainly a lovely nature in terms of um, how they treat you. And as you said, almost after every game now, it's a little bit of a reunion because there's <laughs> lots of Kiwis and plenty of Australians as well um, playing rugby around this part of the world. So um yeah yeah for me it's been a an awesome experience I certainly always wanted to um I guess challenge myself and experience different rugby styles from around the world and I've certainly been able to do that throughout my career now it's, it's great to catch up with you mate uh, it's a long time since I was coaching at the International Rugby Academy a long long time ago look I want to ask you a very important question look this is a rugby world cup year you talk about peaking you talk about being in the right place at the right time we're going to continue to debate through Super Rugby who the All Black first five should be, but what's it going to take for the All Blacks? You know the international competition. What's it going to take, and what's the mindset the All Black first five needs going into that tournament? Oh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be great. Like, obviously, the international game is at an all-time high, isn't it? Uh, I mean, you can literally, you know, pick six seven, eight teams now that will competitively uh, put their hand up at the World Cup this year. And I think that's great. And obviously for, for us, for the All Blacks, you know, there's always expectation, um, not only from within the playing group, but from, from the public as well. But um, yeah, I, I just think it's going to obviously take guys peaking at the right time. Um, obviously the camaraderie and the connection you have to make sure is, is right there throughout a, a World Cup. And then handling the pressure. We all know that's what it ultimately comes down to, especially at the back end of the competition in those crunch games. And I certainly think um, what the All Blacks have gone through in, in recent years will set themselves up pretty well when a lot of pressure does come on um, over in France, you know, when it gets to the back end of the tournament. But, oh, man, it's going to be great to sit back and watch. And, uh, you know, we're all certainly going to be behind the boys. 
Aaron, Batesy here, mate. You, you mentioned that um, you know you, after every game you catch up with a lot of people, a lot of Kiwis over there at the moment, and increasingly there's sabbaticals happening uh, for our top All Blacks. Um, obviously, we know about the financial benefit of going there, but for guys that go over there for a sabbatical and then come back, what other benefits are there? Like I'm more meaning on the rugby field. What other benefits do you see to uh, to individuals' games for when they do come back home to New Zealand? Yeah, I, I think. Um, when I look at a, a sabbatical, it's not necessarily the um, the physical aspects or physical tools that that they can add, but also probably the mental side of things and and just getting into a fresh new environment. I think you know there's a lot to be said for that, especially a lot of our established All Blacks, a lot of guys that have been around the New Zealand rugby scene for a long time, um, just to get the opportunity to experience something different rub shoulders with other international players, um, experience a different culture, put yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone as well, to be honest. Um, but I think that's probably one of the biggest benefits that I see and probably why the New Zealand Rugby Union allow players to have sabbaticals, just to yeah get out there and freshen up and then ultimately come back and integrate what they can back into the New Zealand rugby system again. Now, Aaron, one of your former coaches has been making headlines. Uh, Dave Rennie, of course, there's reports that he may return to Kobe next year or maybe return to the Blues, which I'm sure would be a bit strange for you. But can you give us a few insights into what he's like as a coach? What made him so good with the Chiefs? Yeah, well, obviously, um, I've only got positive things to say about Renz. I just think his approach um, to the game, his approach as a, as a coach, um, he certainly really is able to balance out professional and personal relationships within um, an environment. And I think that's massive in the modern game. Uh, a coach that really understands his players um, is able to get the best out of them. So, yeah, I've certainly obviously heard all the whispers um, about, yeah, different possibilities for ends. But ultimately, all I can say is no matter where he goes, I know that he will contribute massively to, to that organisation. Who do you like it at 10 uh, for the All Blacks, Aaron? You've obviously got Damien McKenzie, who you've been keeping a close eye on and was at your club last year. Uh, Richie Moonga, Bowden Barrett, Stephen Pedalfetter in there as well. Who do you like? Yeah, I mean, oh, there's a... Uh, as you said, all those guys that you've named there um, would absolutely do a stellar job. Uh, for me, I certainly think, like, Based on the last few years, Richie has probably established himself for me as, as the number one 10 um, in New Zealand. You know, of course, I'm a little bit biased towards my man D-Mac, um, and he's doing an amazing job at the Chiefs. Um, I'm, I'm not afraid to say that. But you look at Richie, and I just think um, he is very much in a similar mould to me. The, would I look at, sorry, to me for what Dan Carter was. And wh when I say that, I know they have different strengths, but they are both just so balanced on the rugby field in terms of um, fundamentals for a first five. And, um, yeah, I, I certainly think, as I said, all of them, if they got the opportunity, would, would probably do a great job. But, um, yeah, I certainly think Richie's probably earned that um, over the last few years, the the right to probably be the number one in the 10 jersey. But um, my man D-Mac, I want him to keep putting that pressure on. That's for sure. It is absolutely fine that you're a little bit biased towards the Chiefs. It's only natural. Um, now, it is a very important time in New Zealand. It is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about your journey and why it's so important to actually get checked? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, yeah, I went through my, my own battle and my own journey um, when I was just sort of coming out of high school and getting into the professional ranks of of rugby. But um, I guess my story is that I was very fortunate to have um, well, such a supportive region, to be fair, in the Manawatu. Um, they, yeah, they just got behind me right from the outset. Um, you know, I had endless numbers of, of people just trying to get in touch and send me well wishes and um, yeah just just were in my corner I suppose when I was going through it and that was the biggest thing because um, yeah you have certainly going through something like that you have down days and some days are better than others but um, yeah I, I certainly could feel all, this, all of the support that I was given 
um, obviously in Mano too, but also nationally as well, which was great. But uh, I suppose the biggest thing that I took out of it is um, just to take control um, for yourself as well, I, I suppose, and just get checked. It doesn't take um, a lot to do that. Um, but I know as men, we can be a little bit um, macho and bravado about it all. But um, yeah, I just think there, there's no harm in making sure that your health is priority. Uh, you know, it's paramount to you being able to get out there and live your best life and, and enjoy everything that life has to offer. So um, yeah, it, it is great that it, it's sort of being made, or a lot more of it's being made aware and, and sort of people are just making sure that, yeah, health comes first, first and foremost. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your honesty, for sharing, and do go and get checked. Uh, you can see all the information you need on the bottom of the screen. Thank you so much for your time, Aaron. Um, and maybe when you're done in Japan, you'll think about a little return to the Chiefs or, or Manu or two before you finish. All the blues with Renz there, you know, all the blues. This is not a recruiting show, but the Highlanders are available. <laughs> That's all I'll say. Oh, Renz will bring you in, mate. I don't know if he's... I don't know if these old legs would stick it in. Maybe I'd be better suited in one of those chairs that you guys <laughs> Look, Easy. you'll be welcome Thanks at any stage. Me, eh? Thank you so much. Ohio gozaimasu. <sighs> That is Aaron Cruden joining us there live from Japan. Time to talk about another first five. He mentioned him, Richie Moonga, our incumbent first five for the All Blacks right now. Played his 100th game for the Crusaders over the weekend. Here's his story. <laughs> I just want to say a huge thank you to the franchise that's given me so much, so much joy and happiness, and also to my family, mum, dad, um, my beautiful wife. Thank you. This is 100 games for me, but there's so much more that goes on behind the scenes. I really appreciate all the love and the support that you've given me along this journey. Um, I'm just really happy to be here. This was a dream of mine. I've given everything to this club, the city of Christchurch, to, just to give my all, and I'm just so proud to be a Crusader. It was an awesome moment for Richie Moonga and for his family that were there supporting him as well. Jeff, in the build-up, you said uh, that he has to be the greatest player for the Crusaders. Six titles, you can't argue with that, can you? I don't think you can. I've said on, on record the most influential Super Rugby player. You, in, in a key position which you played, Carlos, the fact that you have to go and perform and lead your mm. team every week, and particularly in big games. We've got a massive debate right now. We've got three guys who we know are capable of wearing the all-black jersey in the 10 position. How do you see this playing out? What would you like to see, uh, probably over the next couple of months, to give you confidence to pick your number one? Well, I've already got confidence to pick my number one right now. And, and who is it? And that's Richie. And why is it? Um, I just think he's earned it. I think he's the form first five at the moment, and he has been all year for me. OK, yeah, Damien, Demax has been pretty good as well, but I think we've got to go for an outright fly half or first five uh, with the World Cup. But in saying that, I'd like to also have D-Mac there on the pitch as well as my second number 10, but playing at fullback. You know, we can set up a double-sided attack with those two either side. You know, we've got options to You're play some You're talking the double pivot thing yeah, again. Yeah, sure, mate. And, and, and do you believe in that? I do believe in that. OK. I do believe. You've always got to have a double-sided attack. Yep. You know what I mean? And if we can have one of those guys on either side to give us options to attack either side of that breakdown, then... Mate, that's, that's got to be a bonus. You're going to have all three first fives in the 23 for the All Blacks then? Yeah, I think so. I, I think Bodie's got to be in there somewhere. I, I think we're going to need that experience. We're going to need his composure. We're going to need his leadership, um, especially in, in big games and tight games. And there's going to be tight games where we're going to need that experience and that composure. Um, yeah, OK, he might be a, a little bit off form at the moment, but I, I think he'll get that back. Yeah, look, I saw some signs yesterday yeah. in the last 40 minutes against the Rebels, though, and I have to put everything in context. And Batesy, I look at this conversation around this position, right, and, and particularly as players, what you know individually is the video doesn't lie, is the fact where you're not quite on top of your game, but you, you have to deal with it yourself. You don't rely on other people. And I know all three of these guys, when they have their challenges, will go to work, and Bowden Barrett's one of those. He will have gone to work, he'll look at his game, he'll be looking at the Blues, and it's one of those things you mentioned a little bit earlier on. When the team's not quite firing, you're not quite getting the best out of an individual. But the thing for me is that he'll fix some of those little errors in his game. We started to see some of the uh, things last or last night. That, that was brilliant. He can possibly, that was brilliant, but brilliant. there were things I saw in the first half that I didn't like, where he kicked when he had numbers and support, and so... I just think it's, we have to be very, very careful when you're, you're talking about players at this time of the season that they're going to work into their form, right? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I just think that whether you like it or not, 
when is, when do we as a nation or New Zealand rugby need Bowden Barrett at his best? Is it right now? And no, it's not right now. So all his gearing will be towards being right for the World Cup. That's that's what it is. And as you said, he did some wonderful things yesterday. He's still got class. And what's the old saying? You know, form is temporary, class is permanent. Yeah, you can't tell me he's not class. You know. So I, I believe he will get there. Um, it'll take him. It'll take him. It's taken him a while to get there. But you sure saw glimpses of it. But. You talk about class, those three boys up there have got a bit of class. I want to ask you though, Lost, though, are they two different types of first five, Bowden Barrett and Richie Monga? Are they different types of player? Um, yes and no. Look, the thing, the two, the, probably the two things that probably stand out for me right now is Richie's more of a ball carrier and he's beating defenders. You know, he's more of a threat. Bowden to me at the moment looks hesitant. You know, he's lacking a little bit of confidence. It looks like to me he doesn't want to take contact. You know, so he's not taking the ball to the line. I can't remember one instance last night where he actually took the ball to the line and got tackled or made contact with the defender. So that just tells me that he's shying off contact or he's shying taking the ball to the line. OK, Richie here, mate, I don't know how many defenders he's beaten this year, um, but, I, but I'm saying it's probably a couple of handfuls. Um, and his goal kicking. Um, for me, Bodie's not goal kicking well at the moment. I'm not too sure why. Um, I think I said to you earlier, he's trying to use every golf club in the bag at the moment instead of just sticking with a driver and just kicking it. I think we've all been there as a goalkeeper, yeah, though. I've, yeah. used, I've used yeah. plenty. I've yeah. used plenty. Yeah, we'll try right? to put him over here yeah, put him rather over. than just kicking them They kick them. Whereas, yeah. but in saying that, though, he might not have that responsibility if Geordie Barrett's got that yeah. and he's on the park, which we anticipate yeah. that being at 12. I, I think, for me, it's, it's, is, it, is it a mindset thing? Is it a, you know, the Blues game plan will be different to what the All Blacks are going to do. Is that one of the challenges you face right now is clearly coaching styles at super rugby level are going to be different what Ian Foster is going to be asking them. And in the last two years, has, has, do you feel as though Richie Wong has been given the keys to the car? I don't think he has, no. Um, and is it time to do that? I, you know, I think they've got a bit of strangle on, hold on him the way he's playing at the moment. You know, you, you see him play super rugby to play in test matches. He just looks a lot more freer playing super rugby. You know, he, I think Crusaders are just giving the licence to go and play. Be you, you know, create things for yourself and others around you. Is where the All Blacks, he's probably a bit more structured, or he looks structured, you know. So he hasn't got that freedom to play, I don't think. You're not concerned if you have the combination of Wonga and McKenzie, it could get a bit loose? Because well, there's no doubt. That? What's wrong with that? Yeah. I, I, Do you I think that's our best need. chance to win? We need that. It's our best chance to win. Um, I think we've just struggled by being too structured at the moment. Yeah, at the moment, we're playing a lot of our rugby just in the 15s. You know, we're trying to run through teams. And I think Super Rugby's gotten a little bit like that as well. Oh. We're not often getting the ball in, into the 15s unless it's through kick pass or we're coming off the sideline and we're going back short side. You know, we're not, we're not testing defences enough by trying to get the ball to edges. You know, everything at the moment just seems like we're just trying to run through them inside the 15s. You know, we, we've got to get a little bit more innovative around our attack. And I just think by having players that can do that, like a D-Mac, like a Richie, you know, even on his day, Bodie can do that. As well. That, that's just giving them the confidence to do that for me, though, Batesy. It's the fact that it's, it's giving them the that's the game plan, go out and do it. And I think that's when we've seen the very best of Bowden Barrett. Yeah. And there's his running, running game. I mean, he's electric. He is, I mean, he's got some of the best acceleration that we've seen in this country. Well, I, I just think that primarily when you give someone a license to do that, you've got to take the good with the bad. Yeah. What you can't do is go, oh, he ran it from his own and goal and we scored a try. Wonderful, he's amazing. Let's do it. Then the next time he does it, it doesn't come off. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Sometimes it's going to come off like that, which is great, but sometimes it's not. And then with the times it's not, you just have to eat your humble pie and go in and defend. And that's, that's how it's got to work. If you're yeah. going to give them the keys to the car, you've got to give them the whole set. So do you think this magic razzle-dazzle that we're seeing from Richie and from Damien is transferable at the international level with less time and space like we saw against Ireland last year and these, yeah, these yes, European sides? It all depends sides. what your mindset is. It all depends what your, your, your attacking structure is. You know, what, what's your attacking coach? You know, what, what, what's, your, what's your aim around your attack? You know, what's your shape? Um, you know, what are you trying to create through your attack and your shape? Um, and at the moment, I don't think that suits Richie the way the All Blacks structure and shape is at the moment. Um, so yes, it can be done, but it's, it's, it's all around mindset and what's your, what your shape and structure is. Well, it suits them in Super Rugby, doesn't yeah. it? And you have named your first 15, or your <laughs> Form 15, I should say, from the weekend of Super Rugby, Round 7. Uh, are there going to be any surprises? Tell us who's um, in your team. I don't think so. This is actually quite tough. Um, it's the first time I've done this. Um, so probably a couple of surprises in the locking department. 
um, and I've just gone for work horses in that department. But anyway, my front row, um, pretty obvious. Um, DeGroote, Taylor and Lomax. Um, we've spoken about DeGroote already. Um, so these are my work horses here. You know, the unseen, uh, unseen heroes, just guys that roll their sleeves up, do the hard mahi, you know, set piece, scrum, just physical dominance, you know, Blackwell and Dixon. Uh, my loose forwards, um, Braden, I also was really impressed with him early on in the match. I think just around his ball carries, his work rate, Savia, uh, Billy Harmon, another one. You know, just goes to work, um, unseen hero. Uh, my nine and 10, gone for Finley Christie and obviously Richie. Uh, my midfield, I've gone for Thomas. Um, you know, I like the way he's playing at the moment. Ball in hand, just able to beat defenders. Billy Proctor, you know, he's been, um, you know, the anchor in that um, Hurricanes back line. And then my back three, I've gone for Rayasi, uh, Mark Talia, which is probably a given. Um, and then at the back, I've gone for Josh Morby. Um, just his work rate as well. I think just his ability on kick receipt to bring the ball back hard and his work ethic. Few unsung heroes in there, uh, non-capped players. Are you happy with these uh, selections in the Form 15? Oh, I'm really happy with Billy Harmon. Mm. I mean, he's a Highlander, but that's irrelevant in this conversation because clearly the All Blacks saw something in him. They brought him into camp late last year, and you look at his versatility. He's played at number eight, played at open side. Uh, with the specifics about his game, you think that are transferable, and do you think he's a guy that maybe not this year because we've got some really good sevens, yeah. but in the future is an All Black in the making? I think so. In the future, definitely. And, and like you said, we've, we've got some really good sevens at the moment, and, and it was hard not to put dupes in there because you yeah. we know what dupes can do. And he had another good game last night as well, and his work here that yeah, strong over the ball. So we have got some good sevens, and we're, we're probably really blessed in that area. Batsy for you. 100% agree, but also I go Riasi as well. Yeah. He's been really good this year, really, really good. Had a presence about him, been physical, and actually looks like he wants to get involved in the game and is doing a good job when he does. Well, time now for our Musashi power play, all thanks to Chemist Warehouse. Now, this is a man that you haven't named in your film 15, Cam Roygaard we're talking about. He can do no wrong in 2023, it seems, of course, coming in for the injured TJ Pedernada. Uh, Jeff, talk us through this, and, and what is it that he's doing that's getting him noticed? Well, I mean, what he does is he reads the game really well, and he particularly loves the contact. I mean, the physicality, and he was up against the good halfback here in Falau Whakatawa, but he read the situation... But this is what was surprising about, for me, he, he didn't just go, take the gap and accelerate, he went away. And Fatuli Pai didn't stand a chance. Mm. Now, if you've got someone who can do that, and we've seen Brad Weber do that as well, you know, I think, I think there's a variety to his game that I really love. And, and that running halfback for me, you know, Lossie, that ability to keep the opposition defence honest, and you talk about creating space and giving someone a licence, it's not only taking an attacking space, but understanding how to move the ball. That's when we've seen the best of Aaron Smith. Cam Roygaard reminds me of that. Yeah, I, I totally agree, but I think he's just got to get that balance right. Probably, last night I probably thought he probably went one or two times too much. So it's just understanding what that looks like around pitches and not doing that too often. You know, I think you've already spoken about his physicality, you know, his, his speed, uh, he's a great passer of the ball, but he's just got to make sure he's not going too often. Do you see the fundamentals all there, though? Yeah, definitely. You know, yeah. I know that's critical, right, Batesy? When you start talking about a halfback, first and foremost, kick game, passing game, you know, positional communication, he seems to have all of those boxes ticked. Good, good wee story too, like not a guy that's been an absolute superstar through school, so he's had to work quite hard for it as well, so he's probably got a good uh, good grounding in what he does, so yeah, I agree with Loss around his, I noticed he did carry the ball quite a lot last night, but he's, uh, he's certainly um, the form halfback of the competition. So is this a guy that they'll be looking at for the All Blacks this year, or is this a guy for the future, is that not the sort of risk they'll be looking to take in an All Black year, Jeff? What would you do if you were the coaches and selectors? We've got a lot of really good halfbacks, and a lot of really experienced halfbacks, and it's position when you get under pressure, you need to f perform. And I think if you look at the guys who, who have done the job for the All Blacks, you know, Aaron Smith's a mm. given, right? There's a lot of competition for those next couple of spots. But um, for me, Brad Webb has been really, really good for the Chiefs. I was disappointed he didn't play probably a little bit more for the All Blacks last year. Um, Finlay Christie uh, behind the Blues, I think has shone out given it hasn't been an easy mm. ride. Um, TJ Peronara just keeps putting up the fight. He's trying <laughs> to get himself back on the pe field. And you can't argue once again, experience goes a long way. But if we had to call on a bolter, this is not a bad way to go, in my view. If you want to change the game, halfbacks are a good way to do it. I think there's a possibility there. Is he in there for you? Yes or no? Not in World Cup year, no. I just it's, don't think he's in enough yet. I think we've got enough there yep. to get us through.
Well, that is your Musashi Power Play available at Chemist Warehouse Camroy Guard, and we cannot wait to see how he goes this weekend against the Chiefs as well. Still plenty more to come on the breakdown. Stay with us. Well, it's the centenary of uh, the Green Machine. 100 years of rugby being played here. A uh, fabulous chance for a whole lot of us old timers now to relive glory days. It's just been a fantastic opportunity to renew those acquaintances. It's a magnificent day here. It's been going for, well, it's going to be a three day event. Uh, golf yesterday and uh, a few drinks at the club. And then we, uh, we've got together today for club day against United Matter Matter Sports. And uh, there'll be a big dinner tomorrow. So it's uh, great celebrations from a very special club in the Waikato. The Marist Club was originally called St Mary's Old Boys, but then in about 1922, we changed to Hamilton Marist and we've been going, you know, pretty full on ever since then. Our current club rooms, this is our third club rooms we've been at. We were previous at Beale Street, Boundary Road, and now here we are on Old Farm Road. So we've got a really proud history. We're the biggest club in the Waikato at the moment, and uh, I think we've also got the most teams operating. So no, we're pretty proud of where things are going, and we've got a good culture in the club there, so long may that last. The facilities around here, the club rooms, are as, are as good as any in the country, and it attracts players to it. The club has good coaches, uh, good administration, and so it all flows, and it, it just builds on it. You can't have a club without a lot of volunteer support. Uh, we've got two committees this year. We've got a centenary committee, which is, has worked tirelessly kind of through that COVID period. And we've also got our current committee, which have got some really outstanding people on that. And we've also got an underlying kind of volunteer base who aren't in those committees, and people just want to help. And rugby is always the forefront of our mind. We had a lot of big family names. My son has played here as fourth generation. My grandfather played here, my uncles, my, my brothers, my cousins. and. We're one of about 20 families I could name that have got three or four generations through the club. And for me, the celebration is about the success of what we've done in 100 years, but a big part of me is looking back to all those guys that have gone before us and, and they've created what we've got now, you know. We've had a pretty good relationship with some of the Catholic schools like St John's and Sacred Heart in Auckland and it's just maintained a good flow through over the years. It had a lot of good friends and a lot of good friendships, a lot of good times, and uh, that's what club rugby is all about. The secret is just to work hard and, and look after your players and uh, treat everyone like a family, I think, and, and make that atmosphere genuine and um, be real about it, and that's what we do. The real treasure of rugby in New Zealand is that you, you come away and all of a sudden you see faces that you did battle with 30 years ago. Um, you, you find out about those players who won championships 50 years ago and you have chats, have a beer with them and uh, just such a really neat, special time to, uh, to, to remember uh, those good days and uh, to reflect and it's just like yesterday. No my hockey my welcome back to the breakdown. Well, Club Rugby is back but it's Easter weekend so I'm pretty sure none of your clubs played this weekend. Well, the Harbour Hawks, have, all I know is they're undefeated this year. They're we, undefeated after well, they one played round. A, well, no, they haven't played a game. Oh. <laughs> so that's a perfect start of the season for me, Batesy. Batesy? What I know is that Suburbs in uh, Blockhouse Bay, New Lynn, um, won their first game last week. They're top of the table. And I think we're cutting off the Gallo Shield there, so they won it's it. A, they've yeah. won it. It's done. COVID's coming, mate. They've cut it off. Oh, yeah. Don't you dare yeah. say that out loud. <laughs> Ever again. How are you Ever supporting again. in the Hamilton competition, Carlos? Uh, Melville. I think Melville got up last week against Morrisville, um, which is a good start. I'm not sure if they had a game yesterday or not. Well, look, I'm going to take this away for Club Rugby for a second because this weekend coming, Moana Pacifica play their first ever game in Samoa. Three of the stands are completely sold out. It is going to be unbelievable. And I reckon they'll pick up their first one of the season too against the Reds. If they play like they did in Christchurch, yeah. I think they're a really good chance. Absolutely. How good would that be? I'm great. I reckon it's great that they're there. I yeah. really do. I think the, the more often they can get there, the better. Mm. Because that's originally what it was designed for. So I think it's wonderful they're doing the first one. Hopefully they can get there more often. Well, we'll be there over in Apia bringing you all the action this weekend. Thank you all so much for coming in. Have a wonderful long weekend, Easter weekend. And we'll see you back next weekend.